What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers and this is the Little Guy Racing Parts Ultra 24 Build Part 2. Welcome back to the channel everybody and welcome back to the Little Guy Racing Parts Ultra 24 Build. This is part 2 of the series after an awesome first episode to this series where we did the initial chassis assembly, we did some body work, we basically assembled a full roller in that first episode. Now I'm really excited for this video because we're going to finish the Punisher build. We got it here, it's still an empty roller, but what we're going to do today is we're going to drop a powertrain in this thing. The goal is to find a motor to fit in here, drive shafts, we've got the accessory kit and the hardware to put the panels on, so we are going to optimistically complete this build in this episode, and fingers crossed everything goes well, we're going to run it. We're going to check it out on the indoor course, and then weather is supposed to be nice in the next couple days, so I'm hoping to get it out on the rocks to give you guys some awesome run footage. I'm so excited for this video. I even put on the Under Armour Alter Ego Punisher shirt in honor of this video. So let's kick it off. Let's take a look at where we are with the build and look at the motors that I've got picked out for this thing. And then we'll dive in and start assembling. So let's take a look at where we are with the build currently. So where we left off with the first episode was that we assembled this full rolling chassis here. I mocked up some of the panels. So we've got this very cool Punisher custom logo on here not attached so what we're going to do one of the things we're definitely going to do today is we're going to assemble the panels so i have all of the painted body panels here they're ready to go i have the set of screws to mount these up i have the scale accessory kit i have the three radiator fans and the radiator here i left this gray because i wanted to simulate the look of a metal radiator so that's what we've got there. This is the rear panel here. So you've got you know, your two gas cans and the filler. I painted these red, same flat red, a little glossier than the frame, but it's gonna match the theme really well. So that's gonna go on the back. So those are the panels that we're going to assemble. I have a set of steel drive shafts. So we are going to do C10 rear drive shaft for the front of this and deadbolt rear for the rear. Now I had to rob these parts off of Snaggletooth. So we've got Snaggletooth's drive shaft and then we're going to see if we can swap in the Gladiator motor. So the Punisher build has got some royal blood flowing through its veins. It's got parts and pieces from two of my best, best builds. So hopefully that gives us some good luck. For motors, what we're going to do, I've got two options for motors here. My hope is that I'm able to get the Micro Komodo in here. Now we couldn't fit the Godzilla Rocket Man combo, but I think we can get the Micro Komodo because it is so small and has such a small footprint. So this is the, actually the motor and transmission right out of my beloved Blue Gladiator. And the reason for that is because the Gladiator is getting a new motor set up this weekend. So it was, it was good timing to do this combo. So we're going to try to put the Micro Komodo in the Punisher build. If that does not work, plan B is to put the Predator 50 turn Little Guy Racing Parts motor in there. So I, I know this will fit because it's a rear-facing motor. It should bolt right up. There's plenty of room in the rear of the chassis for a 50 sized brush motor. So this is our alternative if I can't get the brushless system to work. But the goal of this video is to get the motor situated, get the body panels on, get the drive shafts in, get the electronics wired up. So if we use the Komodo, if this is able to work, I'm going to run the micro receiver and hook it up to the avatar transmitter. If I'm using the brushed system, I've got a V1 electronics setup that I'll use to power this thing. I also want to pause real quick before we get into these mods and just give folks an idea of what comes with the kit and what you have to supply yourself. So I kind of glossed over this in my first video and just want to take a step back and go over that real quick. So the kit comes with your cage, the panels, 
it comes with the linkage the rest is really up for you to supply so I built it around a deadbolt frame rail kit so I basically took a deadbolt frame that I had a chassis that I had and I took the frame rails the skid plate the rear linkage mount you need that as well you will need to supply your own shocks your own axles your own servo so it comes with the servo tray but you do not get a servo with it this is fit perfectly for the Emax, but I imagine that you could fit a larger servo in there too, an Eco Power, possibly a Reefs or an SDRC. It would just stick out further. And of course you have to supply your electronics as well. The kit comes with the hardware to put your panels on, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have plenty of bolts and screws to do the body. So I used a lot of the standard little black bolts that come with the SCX 24s. I used a lot of those and some hard, extra hardware that I had. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of hardware to assemble the bolt on pieces, but you don't have to worry about the small screws for your panels. So I hope that addresses some of the questions about what you actually need to get yourself versus what comes in the kit. And if there's any questions, just hit me up in the comments down below or shoot me an email. Now with that, why don't we jump in here and we're gonna to start to see if we can fit the motor in. So my plan is to drop the skid plate out, attach the motor, and see if I can pop it in from underneath. I am thinking I might have to flip the skid plate around, but we'll see. But in any case, I'm gonna start disassembling the skid plate. We'll mount this little beast up and see if we can get it to work. Let's go. All right, my friends, so I dropped the skid plate out. I have mounted up the micro Komodo. This is the moment of truth, M-O-T, to see if this is going to fit. Now I'm going to put this in backwards. So we're going to have a rear-facing motor. Let's do, like, fingers crossed. Here we go. Let's see. All right, I think we're in. I think it's lined up. Now we'll flip it over and see. Chassis a mess right now, but that'll be fixed. It's in there. Man, fits like perfect. It looks like I can't quite tell if it's rubbing. I don't think it's rubbing on that tray. I think, oh man, it is so close. But I'm kind of, I don't think my skid plate's quite situated all the way up. I think it, it clears it by... I don't know what unit of measurement that is. It is near microscopic, but I can see light between the tray and the motor. So I think we're good. Fantastic. It fits. Now, what I have not, I have considered, but I haven't tested is what this is going to do to my drive shaft fitments. Now I had it all set with the drive shafts that I had around but this is gonna change our length. So now we're gonna to have to do some troubleshooting to see what drive shafts I need to get in there. So that'll be the next step here is to make sure that we've got the drive shafts that we need to link this thing up. So I'm gonna start digging through my parts bin and seeing what I've got to put this together. My friends, the RC gods are smiling upon us today because the drive shafts that I had planned on did fit. So we did the deadbolt rear in the rear, C10 rear in the front, and it still was able to fit even with flipping the skid plate. So this was awesome. So we now have a functioning drivetrain here. So the motor is in and bolted up, drive shafts are hooked up, linkage is hooked up, it's ready for power. So this is super exciting. I'm gonna put the new Predator motor on the shelf. We're gonna use that in another build in the near future, I'm sure. But for now, we're gonna proceed with the Micro Komodo. Now this is fantastic because we didn't have to alter anything in the chassis. we still got the full battery tray in the front. So we'll be able to keep a bunch of weight in the front with the battery right up there. And we're gonna use the Micro Receiver and the Lizard Pro 
in the back here and there's plenty of room and it's not going to take up any room and it's going to be super light. So the micro Komodo itself is very light. It's everything is going to be super light in the rear. We're going to bias everything in the front. It's going to be great. The whole rig itself doesn't weigh a whole lot at all, but I think the weight distribution is going to be fantastic on this thing. So I'm anticipating some really, really good performance out of this build. It's going to be awesome. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my Lizard Pro. I'm going to grab a micro receiver, and we're going to stick those down in the back here with some solid double-sided tape. I'm going to grab a battery, and then we'll power this thing up. Super exciting. So let's check it out. Okay, here we are. So I've got my Lizard Pro with Bluetooth here. And I've got my micro receiver. This is going to hook up to our avatar. And I've got some Reefs servo tape we're going to use to tie these things down with. Let's check out this receiver. I picked up a bunch of these on Black Friday. I figured I, figured I would use them for builds, and I'm glad I did because this is going to be perfect. So just look at the tiny 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 size of this thing it is so small this is going to be ideal for the back of this thing so there's our receiver and the lizard pro we're actually going to take the bluetooth dongle right off here and we're going to hardwire it in to the micro receiver All right there's our duo there is ready to go now, where do we want to put these on here? That's looking like the way it's going to go is receiver on passenger side, ESC on the driver's side. I'm gonna have to stick them down to the kind of the inside of the tubular chassis there. Hopefully I can get a good connection with the tape right there. Wow, that was a lot of work to get that situated the way I wanted, but I think we are good. Now we're even more centered from a weight distribution standpoint because everything is right in the middle. So hopefully when I put the door panels on, you don't see any of that. So it's actually, it's nice and snug in there. You can reach the power switch, everything's plugged in. I guess before I button everything up, we should power it on to make sure everything's good. So I'm going to do that now. Oh my gosh, we got power. Holy cow, it works. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Look at that. Holy smokes. It's alive. This is nuts. <laughs> we did it. This is so awesome. Cool. Now we can start putting the panels on. We can button this thing up and then we can really rip it. So this is awesome. I'm gonna turn this off and then we'll put the panels on, see what the finished product looks like.
Here it is, the finished product for the most part. All we've got to do is put a battery in here and fire this thing up and take it for a spin. But this is it, all assembled. Panels are on. Accessory kit is on. It is complete. I can't believe it. This thing was actually really easy to install. Panels went on perfectly. Again, everything was lined up exact. It was no problem to assemble. I am super impressed with how easy it went together and how awesome the fit and finish is of this kit. I love the contrast of the red and the black. I almost missed the raw tubular frame, to be honest with you. These panels look great on here, but I really liked the kind of exposed cage. So I might mess around with taking some of the panels off and running it more exposed with the red cage. But in either case, I think it looks glorious the way it sits right now. Everything came together so nice. It just looks awesome. I am so happy with how this came out. It's got great movement. The chassis feels fantastic. I haven't run it yet, but let's see how the suspension works. So again, this is a three inch ramp, so it's able to flex really well, pretty much to the top of that ramp. Let's see it in the back. Yeah, it looks great. I love the body, how this thing works together. The tires go right up over the fenders. They don't touch, there's no rubbing at all. The action of the linkage feels really smooth. The stance, I think, looks great. I don't know if I'd want to go any wider. The wheelbase is excellent for this chassis. And it's just, overall, I'm just so impressed. And I am so pumped we got the Fury Tech system in there. So the electronics are very clean for the most part. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is that if I have to get in there and mess with the receiver connections or the ESC connections, I'm gonna to have to take body panels off because it was difficult to work inside the cage to get everything situated and plugged in. So I'm hoping that everything's reliable and solid because I don't wanna be taking panels off to get in there. For the battery, we should be able to just pop the hood off and slide the battery right in this spot. Now again, I'm only going to be able to run pretty thin profile batteries. You know, the stock ones fit in there. I might be able to run my EcoPower 450 mAh ones in there. We'll have to wait and see, but it's going to be a tight squeeze for any any bigger battery. Although I suppose you could just pop it in through the window and you could run whatever you wanted to as long as you weren't afraid of it like just kind of jumbling around in there. There's plenty of room in the cage itself. So if you want to pop something in here, that's totally fine as long as it's not obstructing the outrunner motor there, which is pretty well tucked out of the way. It's even kind of under the roll cage in the back here. So very exciting, just a great project. I'm so happy with how it came out. And you know, the, the logo on there and everything, the way it all comes together, it's exactly how I envisioned it. Probably even better, truthfully. I'm just so in love with this appearance and the way this thing works together. So I'm going to stop geeking out over it. Why don't we throw a battery in it and we'll take it out for a run. Awesome. Look at that. Look at the blue lights in there. Man, it looks so good. Can't wait to try it. This is going to be great. So right off the bat, the Fury Tech is super jumpy, super powerful in this thing. You know, the Gladiator weighed a lot. So the Micro Komodo was hauling around a lot of weight, but in this thing, it is so peppy. I'm oh man, it's so twitchy. I'm almost glad I didn't go with the Godzilla motor because it would be, look at that motor in there turning. The Godzilla motor would be like out of control. This works really well. It's got more than enough power to throw down if you want to, and then I still got that slow crawl ability also. This will be a good test of kind of the breakover angles here. Plenty of clearance on there, no issues. It 
it's so awesome to see this thing alive. I mean, this is so cool to see it come up from the ground up. Just a bag of parts, and now here it is. Oh my gosh, it looks fantastic. Wow, it's quite the climber too. I mean, that's like one of the most vertical spots on our indoor course here. Let's get it over to Mini Moab and see how it does over there. Let's try some vertical climbs. I'm pretty confident it'll climb really well because of how the wheelbase is. Look at that, flat as a pancake going up there. On Hell's Gate while we're over here. Man, that was a good recovery. Wow, this thing is an animal. Look how flat it stays. I am amazed at how well it sorted out the chassis as it just stays so planted. Over on the escalator now, let's try this out. Oh, the Fury Tech motor in there. Oh my gosh, so easy. Man, what a beast. Let's talk about the Punisher build. Man, this thing is amazing. This is amazing. I gotta tell you, this is probably one of, if not the best performing rigs that I have. I am shocked at how well this thing performed. Next to the comp build, I don't know if there's anything that could touch it. It is just so flat and composed on the track. It is The way it climbs is just incredible. It feels really balanced and smooth and stable. Man, is just such a great performing rig. I am so impressed. As much as I'd wanted to get the Godzilla motor in there, I think it would have been too much. So I think the Micro Komodo is the perfect fit for this build. It sits in there just right. It's got plenty of room for the electronics and battery and everything. It sits down in there nice and low. Didn't have to cut or modify anything and it has all the power I need when I want to throw down and really push this thing like an Ultra 4 truck would be pushed. You know, this thing now has all of the versatility and the capability that I set out to achieve right from the beginning. It's got that slow crawl, that real gradual slow crawl ability from the Komodo, but you can also you get into the throttle and the thing will rip. And with the avatar and everything, we can toggle back and forth between low power mode very easily. So I can go from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde instantaneously when we want to change personalities with this thing. Just great. Just an awesome build. So impressed with it. As far as building it goes, this was a ton of fun. I had so much fun building it. It was intimidating at first. And guys, I got to tell you, like, I am not a patient person. Like This hobby is tough for me sometimes because I like instant gratification. I like things to be quick and efficient. And I have a really hard time with the, the minutia and the really small details of some of the aspects of this hobby. So that's why I was a little skeptical when I tackled this build. But it went together super easy. It was super fun. The pieces and everything lined up perfectly. The hardware fit excellent. 
the panels, everything bolted on, no problems whatsoever. So it was really just taking a strategic approach, laying out your panels, laying out all the components, and then just bolting it up and everything fit perfectly. So I am so impressed with the fit and finish of this kit. So I could go on and on and on about this build, but I'm gonna wrap it up there. Guys, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of this build, the Ultra 24 build? We crammed a lot into this video. In just a two-part series, we got this thing up from a bag of parts into this incredibly well-functioning build, and it was so much fun. I was so glad I was able to share this with you guys. So definitely let me know your thoughts down below what you think. So stay tuned as we continue the custom builds. We're going to get into some other buggy builds. I've still got the Godzilla motor. I'd like to build an actual rock bouncer, maybe a 24 scale rock bouncer. We'll see. We've got big plans. It's going to be a fun winter, and I'm pumped to share it with you guys. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I'll see you in the next video.